We had the high here, right? And we had the dip, and then we had the higher high, but again, never confirmed. Hello everyone, our legendary guest, trader, and analyst, Gareth Soloway indicates that the markets are in the pause phase just after the Christmas and before the new year, so the key to identify the near future moves is to watch and correctly predict the upcoming price trends as well as patterns and prepare yourself for Bitcoin, crypto, stocks, and gold moves. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. This is a chart I highlighted yesterday about a potential breakdown on the US dollar, and it certainly looks like we have broken down. And again, just taking a look here, this is where it gets interesting, right? So what we have is we have a low pivot over here, a low pivot over here, and now we've broken this trend line here. Now, the reason why this is important, and I explained it yesterday, is because, again, if the dollar continues to fall, number one, the stock market likes it, at least for now, but number two, you can start to import inflation. And again, just ask countries, which obviously are extreme scenarios, but Venezuela, Zimbabwe, Argentina, again, as your currency gets debased, drops in value against other currencies, it tends to raise the prices of goods, obviously anything that is imported. So again, this is a big deal. Now, my estimation is we're not gonna see a free fall on the dollar. De-dollarization, which is the hot term, that's not happening for years and years and years. Yes, eventually it will happen, but not in the near term. So again, we talked about it yesterday. This is your short-term target around 99 and change. And again, that'll be your near-term level. We'll have to see if that holds. Ultimately, next year, I do think there's a chance we could really start to go down quite a bit lower. You could even be testing these levels in here, which if we look across, you're talking about the 95 level on the Dixie. Now, if the 95 level gets hit on the Dixie, think about where commodities are. Commodities, again, starting to rally back up. We've seen oil move up. Yesterday pulled back a little. Today's it's back down a little bit, but still well off the near-term highs. But what about iron ore, iron ore, cocoa? You know, all of these other commodities, if the dollar continues to decline, those commodities just naturally will start to move to the upside. And that's where you get into some crazy scenarios on reigniting inflation. And by the way, if you look back in the 70s, we had basically this price action in the 70s in inflation. Inflation went up, it then came down because again, there were steps and measures that took place. And then you know what it did? It started to turn like this. Everyone thought this was a big win, inflation was over, and it turned back up and actually made a higher high. And again, that would be the concern right now with me in following what we're seeing in the commodities with the US dollar starting to decline with various things like that. All right, so that's just one chart I wanted to talk a little bit about. If we look at the 10-year yield, the 10-year yield fell yesterday. We can clearly see here, if I zoom in, we can see the trend line, obviously. But if we zoom in, we did break some key support. We're now trading up just a little bit on the day. This is the daily, so yesterday broke. We're now trying to retrace and recapture. There's been no confirmation below this trend line. So we wanna see, can we recapture this level? If you recapture this level here, right here, you have a chance to get a good bounce. If you can't and you confirm, which you'd need to close below yesterday's low of the day on the 10 year, you then start a cascade effect that could take us honestly back to 3.5% on the 10 year. Now the market, I said this yesterday, the market is getting crazy in terms of expectations. They're expecting 175 basis point price, uh, cut in Fed funds, right? So again, that's telling us that if the Fed, and this is why I don't think this makes sense, because it's a double-edged sword, right? If the Fed is forced to cut 175 basis points in 2024, where is the economy at that point? Can the stock market still rally if the economy is so bad that the Federal Reserve has to cut rates to that extent? And that's something that I don't think is going to happen. I don't ultimately think that the Fed, if they're gonna cut that much, I don't see stock prices rallying significantly higher. Now we're gonna get into this next M top pattern that I teased you guys with. I wanna show you this guys, because there's a lot of M top patterns out there. And so what I wanna do is I wanna flip over to this chart of of the S&P 500. Now, 
This is the S&P 500 going back to 1999 to 2000. Then we had the collapse from 2000 into 2003. Then we had this top. And the reason why I'm pointing this out, a lot of people get excited when price breaks a previous pivot high. The one thing to watch for is the confirmation signal. Now again, let me just explain. The confirmation signal, it tells you whether there's a real breakout or a fake out, or a real breakdown or a fake down, right? Or a fake out. And the reason why this is important is because the algorithms and the institutions, they know that people will jump on board, right? So again, when you look at this chart, this high right here, right? So again, let me bring that up again. This high right here, we actually took it out in 2007 by a little bit, right? We went higher. We made a higher high, essentially. If you look at that, it's a slightly upsloping trend line. Now, again, what ends up happening in these scenarios? Well, you have a lot of stops right at that high pivot. Those people get stopped out. You then have a lot of people that say, oh, look at this. This is a breakout in the market. Who cares that the market rallied this much straight up? It's a breakout, so I'm going to buy it. I don't like to do that personally. That's not how I trade. I like to buy things at a discount, but a lot of people do. And the thing is, they know this. The institutions know this. The algorithms know this. And ultimately, Ultimately, what do they do? The rug gets pulled, and you got this 2008, 2009 collapse here. And so when I bring this up, I want to show you other charts where this happens, right? So now let's go to natural gas. Natural gas, again, same sort of pattern formation. You had the big move up. Everyone got, wow, that's an amazing move up. And then the crash kind of came in here, the middle ground. And then we started to move back up. And look, this high was eclipsed by this high. Again, never confirmed though, absolutely never confirmed. So if you knew the confirmation signal, you're like, eh, I don't really believe it yet. Let, let it prove itself to me by confirming. But ultimately, a lot of people got stopped out here. It went higher, and then what happens? Look at the drop that we've seen to the downside on natural gas. And again, a case in point, and the reason I'm bringing this to your attention, folks, is I study charts. And again, charts don't always repeat, but they often rhyme, all right? And the reason they rhyme is because we are traders, we are humans, you, me, everyone out there in the world, millions if not hundreds of millions of people participating in the stock market, in the crypto markets, in the commodity markets. And we tend to have the same emotion. We have fear and we have greed and we have varying levels in between that. And that's really what goes on. And this is why charts tend to rhyme because the buyers and the sellers are reacting to the same emotion that they reacted to back in ancient Egypt, in Rome, in Greece, and all over the world. These type of things, these emotions within us were exactly the same. We don't really change. We don't really change our emotional nature. So that is why charts tend to repeat over and over again. Now, again, my final example, and by the way, to be clear, you could go through charts and find a 10, 20, 50 more examples of this happening over and over again. But if we go to the Bitcoin chart, right, taking a look at Bitcoin, what do we have here? the same exact thing. And this, by the way, was one of the reasons why I was able to pinpoint that we were not breaking out up here in 2021 when we eclipsed the previous high. Yet everyone out there was calling for 100K by the end of November, and then you know 150 and so on and so forth. By the way, much like they're doing right now, case in point there as well, just a note there. Again, notice the similarities in human nature. These type of things, the psychology of a human is very, very important to understand. And so really what we have here is we had the high here, right? And we had the dip and then we had the higher high, but again, never confirmed. That is a very important. And ultimately what happens to Bitcoin, you get the same little bop right here, just like with natural gas. We saw that in natural gas. And then you've obviously come and bottomed out and we've now began to rally back up. We'll see where that goes, if it stalls out or not. I'm starting actually with the heat map of Bitcoin and crypto. And again, obviously Bitcoin is the biggest red one right over here. Uh, it is down just fractionally 1.7%. But really, if you look at this, the heat map in general, we're looking at a heat map that has a lot of red on it today for crypto. And I wanna show you guys a few things that I think are interesting. So if we flip over to the, uh, the chart of Solana, Solana continues 
use its collapse. Now, again, I warned you guys about this just yesterday. I said again, in fact, it was two days ago, excuse me. I said, listen, I am seeing the signs, the technical signs in these altcoins that they are literally getting ready to collapse. And the reason I'm seeing these signs is I'm seeing, number one, I'm seeing the shilling, the scamming, the, the euphoria, Anytime you post anything bad on any crypto, oh my God, you better watch out. They're coming for you. It is exactly what I saw in 2021. Okay, now again, not with Bitcoin. I want to be clear. Bitcoin, still doing its thing. It's not extended like it is. People are still excited about the, obviously, the spot ETF, the halving. But it's stocks like, or I should say crypto like this, that you have to be very careful about, guys. A lot of leverage is being used. All right, 25. I mean, I keep on seeing these posts on social media like, oh, I just made, uh, you know, 75% on XYZ crypto using 25 leverage or 50 leverage. That leverage, as you come down and you stop those people out, it's additional major selling. You can see this chart of Solana come back in amazingly. Let's go to the chart here. But really, you could see this coming back in right to this area around $75 very, very, very quickly. Now, again, do I think there's 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 actual use case for Solana? Yes, I do. All right. So it's more that it's just gotten way too extended in the near term with this move up. It's already trading back down from 126 or so back down to $97. That's a big percentage drop. And honestly, yeah, you'll probably get a little like this and you'll drop it down. What's interesting to about Solana is that Solana was being talked about as being the Ethereum killer. And what I think is fascinating about this, and that you guys probably will find fascinating as well, is that if you look at Ethereum, Ethereum is actually rallying up or has pushed up here. If we look over here, it actually just tagged a pivot high while Solana is falling. So what we're actually seeing here, guys, is that there's a rotation, a partial rotation of capital from people in Solana that are moving back to Ethereum. Now, again, do I think Ethereum is going to go to the moon and go to 5,000 in the next week? I don't think so. But again, I could be wrong. I've been wrong on some of these. Obviously, these cryptos going crazy. I mean, literally nuts to the upside. Obviously, I'm just managing my shorts and everything like that. We're doing fine. We'll end up making lots of money on these. But the point being, again, guys, Solana, uh, Ethereum moving up, Solana moving down. It's interesting to watch this kind of inverse relationship as they, they seem to be have been pitted against each other. Which one is going to flip? I've heard, oh, Solana is going to flip Ethereum. Oh, Ethereum never will be flipped by Solana. There's this battle being waged on this. Now, looking at Ethereum, what's kind of fascinating about this, look at this channel, guys. So we look at this channel on Ethereum, we can actually start to see some rhyme and reason, right? We have all these low pivots down here, right? And then on the upside, we actually just tagged this resistance level. And you can see it over here just a little bit. It's kind of hard to see, but nonetheless, that is resistance. So we did hit resistance on Solana, excuse me, on Ethereum. We'll see if we push through that to the upside. But again, right now, you are into resistance as well on Ethereum. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Gareth Soloway. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.